Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, so if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of A Place to Call Home. <laughs> so, <laughs> our last couple of videos have been pretty s Actually, I think every video in this series has been pretty silly so far, so... Let's see what today, today leads us into, shall we? But anyway guys, sit back and enjoy, let me change for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right, <clears throat> breathing intensifies. Oh God, why isn't Leo awake? Leo! Should I make a run for it and wake Leo up? I could, yes, I could. But wait, I could make this monster angry. He might even kill all of us. Let alone be me being able to run right now. That's what someone in the comments once said. Just, Philio, just have a Snickers. <laughs> His breath brushes on my neck. He's too close! You wanna add more to that? He passes me the box. His long claws nearly scrape my hand. It, sure! I grab the box with a shaking hand. You're shaking. Is something wrong? No, nah, it's just a side effect from the drug I took from the hospital. Oh. That heartbeat intensifies. That heartbeat intensifies! That heartbeat intensifies! <laughs> Ding! <laughs> ah! Hey! Leo's sleeping. <laughs> I silently plate the pizza from the microwave. I turned around to hide a small tear that dropped from my cheek. It, it, here you go. He takes a slice. Hmm, you're right. Pineapple does taste good on pizza. After silently watching him, mu mu telling him munch down all the slices in fear, he chugs down an entire carton of milk from the fridge. Ah, that was good. He grabs my hand. W where are we going? Sleep. Y you can let me go, you know. Hmm. Kicking me with one hand, he carefully lifts me up and on, lifts me up to the bed. He falls down beside me. Hmm. Hmm. He faces me, his hot breath blowing on my face. I think I'll go get a pizza slice. He pulls me back down. Hmm. Internal scream. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. What the fuck is going on? Ludus. Hmm. Yeah. I froze to his bellowing call. Do I? Look like a monster. Hmm. Would you hurt me if I said yes? Now, why would I do that? You look like you would. He didn't reply. I carefully raised my hand to his cheek. He lets me touch it. My soft palms touch his squishy face. He looks like a monster, but he felt like the same filio I know. Lude. Hmm? What is it? I'm scared. And tired. Tired of what? Hmm. Everything. I could hear him sniffing. I've been trying so hard to keep myself happy, to forget the past. But it keeps on haunting me every single day. He's completely ruined my life. I hate him so much. Hey, don't say that. I'm sure he just needed the best for both of you. He wanted the best for both of you. And I'm sure he had no regrets doing so. But he left me, and he's never coming back. It was all I had. He gave my life meaning, but now he's gone. Hey, now. I placed my hand on, the large, on his large chest. The beat of his heart is slow and steady. He leaned closer. His blue eyes faintly glowed like the clear ocean. I stared. Inch by inch, his lips starts to touch my nose. It is soft like the day, where the breeze hits you in green fields, sweet like Leo's buttery French toast. It is how I imagined it. His hands traveled around my waist, pulling me even closer. I held onto his strong arms. Lewd. Yeah? Would you help me start over? Of course. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was intense. Hmm. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I sat up. Uh, th Filio? <sighs> Is he at it again? I checked the time on my phone. 8 a.m. There's also a couple messages. Filio. I'll be out to the city today. I'll be home by sundown, and don't worry, my fangs are back to being small. By the way, thanks for, you know, last night. I replied. Just try not to scare me next time, himbo. And smiley face. Send. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Hectic. 
I sat there for a moment and took in the warm sun. I'm surprised neither of us fell off the bed last night. I guess he stopped me from falling off. My nose picks up something unusual. Something off. Something rancid. Metallic. Like cider vinegar? Is it from him last night? Did he release some kind of territorial marking? I don't remember wolves being able to do so, but of course wolves mark their territory. Maybe it happens when you become partly savage? Hmm. But where is it coming from? My nose travels along the sunken surface of the bed. I sniffed under my arms. Oh. <laughs> is it coming for you? As expected, the mirror is still broken. Of course it is. It was too real to be a dream. I wonder what Leo thinks of this. After rinsing my fur with some strongly scented soap, I want to fetch myself a set of fresh clothes and finally smell like a sweet summer's day. God, I'll never, I'm not going to get over how beautiful their home is. Good morning. Hmm. Lotus? Oh, sorry. Lotus, come eat. Eggs, strips of bacon, and toast. A classic. I sat down and we all ate silently. Seth slowly chewed his food with his head boredly rested on it. Well, his horde, well, with his head boredly rested on his arm. While Leo, on the other hand, had his had this thousand mile stare. Hmm. You okay? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. He's definitely not feeling right. One second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Cats were trying to get into a fight. Of course they do. If you hear any outside sounds, these people are mowing the fields that we live by. Anyway, let's get right back into it. Okay. He idly sipped on his coffee. Do you happen to know what happened to the mirror? Uh, um, how do I explain this? They're both lightheaded, so maybe they'll believe me. Well, it's worth a shot. Filio, he turned savage and destroyed it. I confidently smiled. Hmm. Ludus, I may be a bit tipsy, but what you just said is absolutely stupid. <laughs> so, let's assume he broke the mirror. Do you know why he did it? That, I do not know. He kind of just did it out of nowhere. I swear, that boy. I didn't know that he's... didn't know that he's quite the troublemaker. Hmm. Do you know where he went? Um, he said he went to the city to take care of stuff. Of course he did. Hmm. Oh, it's getting pretty late. Seth munched down all his food in one chomp. Thanks for the great time, Lionheart. Ah, any time. Do come and pay us a visit again. I'll contact you beforehand. All right, take care. Bye, Ludus. He waved. Take care. I like Seth. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to call someone to fix it. He began tapping on his phone. <laughs> After we finished up our own place, we both went to the living room and hopped onto the sofas. The big cat lied on his back with his eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling. Thanks for cleaning up our mess last night. I planned on cleaning it myself after a quick nap, but, um... I did not really want to wake up. No biggie. It wasn't too big of a mess. He stretched his legs forward and let out a whimper. Phew. I'm sleepy, but at the same time, I'm not. You two really had fun yesterday. We sure have. I haven't sung that good in forever. Yeah. You should have joined us. I don't really sing. Oh? You don't have to be a singer to have a good time. Ugh. Why don't we have a little trip outside? I don't think that's a good idea. Aren't you tired? I do want to sleep, but that would make me, that would wake me up all night. That would wake me up all night, okay. So, do you want to go out or not? Oh, uh, where though? First, we'll go visit your grandpa. Then we'll go have fun somewhere else. I giddied a little when he mentioned him. All right, as long as you feel okay. A cup of coffee will do the trick. Now, go change and I'll make one. Go change while I make one, okay. Aye! <laughs> I guess we're gonna go see his grandpa, okay. Hmm. I'll have some coffee there if you want. Thanks, but I'll pass. Mm hmm. He's gonna drink it all himself. He's gonna be super hyper. Does Philio know where we're going? Nope. I can message him though. All right. Tell him to go to his granddad's bar. Mm hmm. Done. You ready to go? Yep. Let's go. Hmm. 
I've wanted to ask, is Filio married? I saw a picture of him with a ring on his finger. Hmm. I think you should reserve that question for Filio. Huh? What about you, though? Just save it for him later. Okay. We got in the car and I took the front seat. Windows were open for the breeze to come gushing into my face. The gushing wind blows my hair to the back of my head. Oh, it's always a nice feeling. It's like skydiving but in a car and less deadly. As I sniff the wind, salty air sparks inside my nose. I've been through this road a hundred times already, but the blue sky and open sea is always a nice sight. It always takes my mind off of troubles, only for a moment until I think of him. It's something, that crawling, it's something that's crawling up, my, up to my chest. Something unwelcome. Hmm. So, where do you want to date? Date? Yes, you know, since it's just the two of us. That's, why you, that's what you call it, right? Yeah, a, a date. I think the shore down there would be a good spot. And maybe we could drive by some by for some fresh food. Seafood. Seafood, huh? Sounds nice. Phil told me where we could get some fresh ones in the city. And seafood it is. <laughs> I rolled the window up. Hmm. Leo? Hmm? Have you ever seen someone go savage? Like a normal person that you know is perfectly well suddenly going wild like an animal? Not that I've seen any, no. Is this because of what you told me earlier? Well, you might not believe me, but I saw one. Even touched him. Did you drink yesterday? No! Hmm. For all I know, the only savages were our ancestors. Hunt and eat smaller animals. Maybe even each other. You know how life is. It's eat or be eaten. Hmm. Uh... <laughs> but really, I haven't. Not me, at least. I rested my head back. A savage animal. By the way, you do know who I'm talking about, right? Who? Filio. Hmm. Hmm. What happened? He turned into this beast, looked like a half saber-toothed tiger, half wild wolf. Mm-hmm. I saw him in the bathroom, and his hand was bleeding, so I patched it up. He didn't hurt me, though. He's perfectly fine. Uh-huh. He also ate a lot. I think he was hungry. And he emptied a gallon of milk, too. <laughs> I don't know if he believes you. He might believe you about the milk thing. I noticed the car moving a little wobbly. Leo? Oh, no! Oh, crap! Leo, wake up! I quickly took hold of the steering wheel, improvising movements and channeling my inner instincts. Ah! I froze as another car headed right towards us. Ah! Ah! <laughs> he takes over the wheel and spins it to hard to the right, turning us in a 360-degree spin. The tire screeched before regaining back its balance, finding ourselves at the edge of the cliff. What the fuck? Sorry, sorry. What the hell? I think your story drove me to sleep. But I wasn't making it up. Hmm. <laughs> I think we should stop for a while. It's all right. I got this. Uh -huh. Leo, do you got this, Leo? Do you? Can you uh, pinch me? Why? To uh, keep me awake. Okay. I lightly pinched his arm. How's that? That was a tickle. Do it somewhere since... You're going to fucking regret saying that, man. Do it somewhere sensitive. All right. I grabbed his nipple and squeezed it between my fingers. Hmm. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? No, you don't need to get a fucking erection while you're behind the wheel. That's not a good idea. This is gonna ha this just happened. It's gonna happen again. D do that again. I felt the round tip and squeezed it. <laughs> this is so silly. Well. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't with this fucking visual novel. Oh my god. Yes. Mm, don't stop. This doesn't look like what you had in mind. But it's working. I kept pressing on the round tip. He lets that short gasp of breath is on each press. Huh. Wait a minute. Why did you stop? You're enjoying this. Well, you were the one squeezing my tits. <laughs> I was supposed to keep you awake. I said pinch, not squeeze. Uh, hmm. But it did work. It, it did. 
just gonna be doing that the whole time, uh, playing with Suzu's nipples while he's driving. <clears throat> so, uh, mm. uh, <laughs> I keep playing with his nipples in the car. Oh, this game is killing me. I place my hand on his chest and begin squeezing it again. Hmm. You're gonna get to a fucking wreck. A tent slowly forms in my pants and I hide it with my palm. I run my finger across the tip a few times. Eventually, I had to stop the fun. I, I think this is enough. So soon. You're well awake. <laughs> Large buses and taxis cross the street as we stop under a red light. Each one is different in size could to accommodate the large animal, the large mammals like lions and tigers. Oh, we waited. A pride of little lions in their blue navy-like uniforms crossed in front of us, led by a white lioness. They seem to be in and out of a school trip. On my left are a bunch of business wolves in black suits. Ah, the wolves of Wall Street. One suddenly stops and turns to our direction. I turn away casually, pretending I didn't see him. He pulls one of his partners back and whispers to him something. All of them suddenly pause to look at us. Uh, Leo? Leo! Hmm? What is it? On your left! He turned, but as he did, they, they uniformly turned and walked away. Your type? No! They were staring at you! They were? Well, do I think... Well, I do think I have some good looks. Don't you think so? Huh. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. The light turned green and we took a right turn. They must have recognized me because I go to their offices very often. Seriously, what do you even do there? Nothing important. He parked at the back of Grandpa Ed's bar. The structure was narrow and small-looking, a bit duller compared to its neighboring buildings, maybe intentional to make it seem less eye-catching. What the fuck am I looking at? Is that a... What is this? Ooh. Kinda hard to tell what I'm looking at. We both enter the... We both enter and the first person to greet us was the security guy. It's a bulldog, and his face was not familiar around here. He was built robust, like a wrestler with a chest as big as his... A chest as big as his ass. Really? How would you know? Did you just literally pass him? Or... Huh, <sighs> okay. Alright. Though, he was more of my height and only made Leo's mountain-like body more daunting. ID? Oh, a new guy. He stood firmly with an unshaken gaze up at Leo. I'm Edward's son. I came here to visit. Mr. Edwards, can I have your IDs then? Um... I have my driver's license at the car. Can we, can't we just go in? No. No IDs, no entry. Mr. Ed's word is law around here. But I really am his son. Don't you think I look like him? Blue eyes, red hair? He pointed. You do, but any line can look like Mr. Edwards, given the right prop. And this? He looks at me. He's my boy. The dog squinted. That's so, but that still proves nothing. <sighs> How about I prove to you that I am indeed his son? All right, then. Don't hit me, all right? Depends. Leo cracks his knuckles. Back in Hamburg, I used to tame cattle, and they were no ordinary cattle, mind you. I milked them, and I milked them good. That wasn't going where I thought it was. Okay. Ha! He cuffs the man's chest and gives. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? Leo, stop trying to milk the bouncer. What the fuck? Hmm. <laughs> so? Sir, this ain't a strip club. He hasn't done this to you yet, huh? My father is also a pervert, you see. If you're done dissing the owner, please leave. Wait! Requesting some backup at the entrance, two males. Bill quickly pulled out his wallet and showed the silver medal. Here! The dog paused and inspected it. Hmm. How's their Edamondi? Who are you? I'm his father, Lionheart Hauser. False alarm. He places down his transceiver. Come in. Leo winks and gives me a thumbs up. It would seem that the new guys here aren't well acquainted with my father. Yet. Hmm. By the way, don't you think that was risky? That was basically sexual assault. It was the only thing I could think of at the moment. Couldn't you have contacted Grandpa and... Couldn't you contact a, have contacted Grandpa instead? Hmm. Hmm. You're right. 
Sorry, I am a little tipsy. Why did you drive then? Oh my god, there's so many bad decisions being made in this. Leo, fucking drunk driving and fucking groping bouncers and oh my god. What? Can you blame me for having fun yesterday? I guess not. Hm. Ah, now that is one hell of a cool bar. We enter and the first thing that caught my eye was another tall orange figure standing behind the counter. Leo looked so much like him. The brown coffee beard, the signature velvet hair, and the cold blue eyes. And we are going to wait until the next episode to see Mr. Hauser. Because Alarm Chan has just gone off. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching another absolutely silly, silly episode of A Place to Call Home. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!